Now we are going to talk about the ethics behind getting sources of information. So, for example, you're, uh, you're a journalist, you're writing a book, um, you're doing some kind of non-fiction, right, making a documentary or something like that. Um, and these are examples of real things uh, that media professionals, uh, that journalists have done in the past to get information. So we have to ask, is it ethical uh, to get information in this way? Um, this kind of relates to privacy, because privacy is about getting photos and, and, and details about someone, um, but it's, it's a little different. Um, so for example, journalists in the past have gone to a celebrity wedding, and they pretended to be invited, and they just came to the wedding just to get information, to get photos, to talk to people, right? Um, which is kind of illegal, right? When you have a wedding, only the guests uh, should come to the wedding, right? Um, but the journalists decided they're gonna go to the wedding, and then if people ask who they are, they'll lie and say that they're a friend of the bride or something like that, right? So then they can talk with other people and get some gossip, and then they can get some, uh, pictures and things like that so they can write a story about the celebrity's wedding, right? Or bribing people to give you information. For example, there's a new star of a movie who's a, who's a child, who's like an eight-year-old boy, and then you give him money, he's like, $100, come talk to me. And then you have a little interview with the, with the child and you uh, take some pictures or something like that to make your story, right? Now, is this ethical behavior to, to do this? Right. Um, even worse, as people, the journalists have done this in the past. They dress like a doctor, and they go to the hospital, and the celebrity's father is very sick, and they pretend to be a doctor, and then go to the sick, dying person and ask them what they think about their son and try to get uh, some information this way. Right? So these are all real things that, that journalists have done in the past. Um, so what do you think? Is it okay to break into somebody's wedding and lie? Is that okay? Say yes or no. Hello? Is it okay to break into a wedding and pretend? What do you think? No? How about the last one, to pretend to be a doctor and interview a dying man with cancer about his celebrity son? Is that good? No? No. So, at the same time, the readers want this. The readers of tabloid journalism, they want to have all these stories and, and details about celebrities' life. So, is this a good way to get the information or not? Right? It seems very, very unethical because you're lying, uh, but also you're not really breaking the law. And different news organizations uh, and different media organizations will have different standards of ethics too. So for uh, the New York Times or BBC or something, this is very, very unacceptable. But other news organizations, this is perfectly acceptable and this is how uh, they get their information. Another example of of this is uh, from a tabloid called the National Enquirer. And they, uh, it's a tabloid, so again, they report on celebrity and gossip and things like this. And they had this practice called catch and kill. And they would, they would say, everybody knows, if you have information, if you have pictures, if you have a story, uh, you can send all this information to the National Enquirer and they will pay you money, and they will publish it as, as a story, right? But what happened is the National Enquirer would buy these photos, they would buy these stories, they would buy exclusive rights to these stories and these photos, and then they wouldn't publish it. They would keep it. They would keep all these celebrity secrets about their affairs or illegal things they did or, or anything embarrassing for celebrity. They would keep it in a box, probably a literal box, they would, you know. And then they would 
As a celebrity, they would say, hey, famous celebrity, we want to do an interview with you. And the celebrity would say, I don't want to do an interview with you. National Enquirer is a, is a tabloid. It's not good journalism. And National Enquirer would say, by the way, we have all of these photos of you on vacation with this beautiful young woman who's not your wife. And, or we have record of you using, using drugs or doing something illegal. And then they would pressure the celebrity into doing an interview and working with the, with the news organization. So they would catch the story and they would kill it, right? So for example, they kept a safe containing documents on hush payments and, and, and things like this about Donald Trump. So that Donald Trump had a very good relationship with the newspaper. He had a good relationship with the owner and Donald Trump knew if he did something against the newspaper or he criticized the owner, then they would release all this really horrible information about what he's doing. So they would, though the newspaper did this to get power. They didn't do this to provide public with information, they did it to get power and to make more money. So many people thought this is a very big uh, abuse of power. And the CEO, CEO of the National Enquirer would use this power to benefit himself so that he had all these celebrity friends, and, and, you know, but they were just scared of him because they didn't want this information getting out there. Right? So in this case, it's very obvious this is very unethical and very, um, very horrible use of the powers of, of being a journalist. Right? You should get this information and expose it to the public so they know what, what these celebrities or what these politicians are doing. Um, another aspect of this is leaks. Leaking information. Right? Businesses or governments, they have lots of private, lots of secret documents. Secret photos, or lots of files and things like that that they don't want the public to know about. But Journalists, documentary makers, all of these kinds of media professionals, they really want to get this information. Because it's really great information. Right? There are journalists, a lot of good journalists, their main source of information is leaked information. From whistleblowers at a company, they don't like how, what the company is doing, they don't like what the government is doing, so they steal documents and give it to journalists. Right? Um, so for example, many documents from the CIA were leaked to the news media, uh, exposing how Trump was uh, using the CIA to do, uh, to do different things. And Trump got very angry about it. Right? Trump, the leaks show that Trump's national security advisor illegally talked with the Russian government before Trump was president. So Trump's elected president in like November, he becomes president in January, but his friend was going and talking with the Russian government, even before he was president, which is illegal to do that, right? And people found out about this and they leaked the information to the media and the media found out and, and Trump's uh, national security advisor had to resign because they found out this information. Um, but of course, Donald Trump said, the main problem was that the journalists illegally got the information. Um, and that's true. The journalists, the leaked information, people usually have to break the law to steal this information. Right? If you work for a company, you sign your, and you sign your contract saying, I'm not going to steal anything from the company. But many people, many whistleblowers and people like that, they've, they've taken these documents, stolen it, and given it to journalists. And then journalists have used that to, to publish stories. Um, one of the very famous places to do this is a website. Uh, I guess it's a website. It's, it's a whole thing. It's a website and, and offices with real people uh, called WikiLeaks. And WikiLeaks started as a central uh, resource to, for people to give leaked information to WikiLeaks. Right? WikiLeaks wouldn't, wouldn't pay any money. They just thought that very responsible people working for businesses or working for the government uh, would steal information and give it to WikiLeaks. And then WikiLeaks would, would publish it or they would work with a news organization uh, to process the data and to publish it as news stories. Right? Um, um, and it was founded by a man named Julian Assange, who is now 
Yeah, he's in, he's in prison in the UK now for, for various reasons, right? Um, but a lot of it is because they, WikiLeaks was able to publish a very embarrassing top secret information uh, about the UK government. Um, so the different things WikiLeaks has done, they released a video of a US helicopter in Iraq just murdering Iraqi civilians and journalists. And they shared this video online and the video went around and this is all everybody could talk about <laughs> back in the day. That, wow, the American military is just murdering innocent people in, in, uh, in Iraq. Um, and the information was leaked by uh, an army analyst, Chelsea Manning. Um, she got the video and she got other material and she leaked it to WikiLeaks. Uh, but they found out what she did and then she had to spend uh, seven years in jail, right? Uh, there's many other things, many other cables and documents about the US uh, war in Iraq, about US diplomacy and things like that. Um, Sony Pictures, the movie company, uh, they, somebody hacked into their documents and they showed that the, the, the Sony was working very closely with the American military uh, when making movies. Um, Hillary Clinton, during the, the last election in the United States, the last, last election in the United States, um, they, they, somebody hacked into her email and leaked her emails. And they found that she, her, her and her uh, campaign were doing some very unethical things in order to become, to become president. Um, and many people blame WikiLeaks. They say WikiLeaks is the reason why Trump became president. And it's like, yeah, but because they showed the unethical things that Hillary Clinton was doing. So if she didn't do anything bad, then that's not WikiLeaks' fault she did something bad. 